Welcome to Happy Vending, I'm Bill, and today I'm at Rochester Institute of Technology in upstate New York to check out some ancient vending machines that the computer science students hacked way back in the 90s. Let's check it out. Happy Vending. So that's, um... I think Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up, um, signed by Scott Smitelli, um, May 5th, 2008. I believe that Scott Smitelli did a lot of the work on um, at least this current iteration of the electronic control. So now I'm with some computer science majors in the computer science house, which is a floor in one of the dormitories here at RIT. And with me here I have a Wilson, this is Galen, this is Mary, and this is Lonnie, and they're all computer science majors, and they also run the drink program here on this floor, which is basically these old machines, these vending machines that they hacked years ago and got to work. Now, Mary, who contacted me originally, uh, knows a little bit about the history of these machines. Can you explain this whole program, Mary? Yeah, so essentially what happened was um, a bunch of old CSHers were kind of wandering around and found this old vending machine in the trash um, and decided, hmm, I like vending machines, and they cleaned it up and they brought it back to floor. Um, upon bringing it back to floor, they got it working, and um, RIT quickly got word of it and were like, hey, you can't do that, because at the time they had an exclusivity contract with Pepsi for coin-operated vending machines. Um, and so we went back to RIT and we said, are you sure? They were like, yeah. And we were like, well, what if it wasn't coin operated? And so the drink project was born. Um, the drink project basically uses a debit account um, that we control. Um, so students will donate money to the drink project um, in exchange for drink credits. They can use these credits to actually buy drinks. And then we use the proceeds from the donations in order to buy more drinks to stock the machines. So it circumvents the whole coin operated vending machine clause. You know, which, what really got my attention um, and what makes this so amazing is these original machines were over 50 years old. I mean, they're like these super old Vendo machines that you don't see anymore. And first of all, to me, it's amazing that they're even working in the first place. But they, in the 90s, when there wasn't even credit card readers for vending machines, they managed to hack these things and make them computer controlled where they could work on credit, which is just an amazing thing. And uh, when you get to see these machines, and they are going to show us these machines, you're going to see all the electronics that have gone into these old machines, and it's, it really is a marvel to see. So what one should we look at first? Uh, how about we look over at Big Drink? We're going to check out Big Drink. Let's go. It's down this way. CSH stands for Computer Science House. <laughs> Here we go. Here are two of the machines. Now, the soda machine is Big Drink. That's correct. Uh, Big Drink is the oldest of our four machines, as far as I know. You um, recently did some reprogramming of this. Now, in the beginning, they never had control screens, right? Yeah, that's correct. Originally, you would log in with your CSH computer account, um, because we had a terminal in every room. Um, so you would log in with your CSH credentials, and you could run the drink program, um, and it would allow you to drop a drink. And then you would walk down the hallway, and you'd collect your drink. We even had a delay so that um, your buddy wouldn't steal your drink from you. So should we have one of these other students demonstrate how this works? That would be great. Fancy CSH ID that we just started printing. Um, and then go here and say, I want a root beer. And tap it and oh, scan my tag here. here. <laughs> and there we go. Now, I think right now they don't have root beers in there. Root beer, actually. Oh. I think we just had a few left in the slot. So in this machine, you guys vend bottles as well as cans? Yes. Um, we can configure it to do large cans, small cans, and glass bottles. So it's really flexible. And these buttons don't do anything, right? No, they're, they're just cosmetic. It would be cool in the future to get them hooked up um, so you can press a button there and scan your ID and have something drop. But at the moment, they just look cool. So you were just charged. How much was your account charged when you vended? 20 credits. So that's basically the equivalent of 20 cents which is really a great deal. And these are also, the coin acceptor is, is not hooked up with anything. Because we don't have anywhere to like properly put a screen on this one, you can also drop something from this machine just using this screen and tapping here. Why don't you demonstrate that, Galen? Sure. Do you want some chips? 
Sure, get some chips. And here comes some Zaps chips. They also have some shirts in there. Now, they're not keeping these stocked up too much right now because this is the summer and this whole floor is actually closed for the summer. So they just put these items in here just to demonstrate for me. But I see they even have some personal products in there as well, which is also helpful in a dorm. Who wants to open this up and show us some of these electronics? I know some of this is top secret stuff and they don't want to show everything in here, but they're going to show us some of the computer controls going in here. Mary's opening it up. So what is that buzz? Is that buzz? So we have a manual cutoff switch for the motors, um, just for safety reasons, because you obviously don't somewhat want don't want somebody um, poking around in here while everything is all connected to to live wires and whatever. So we have a cutoff switch. That's a nice safety feature, and and you. Yeah, they purposely put a buzzer in there just to remind the user to turn off the power when they open up here to fill it up or whatever. And then over here is where the internet comes in. So this hooks up to an ethernet port? Yeah, so we have an, we have an ethernet port that just runs to these. So this is a little Raspberry Pi. This one runs the display. No, I'm sorry. This one runs the actual uh, vent motors and this one runs the display. Terry, what is a Raspberry Pi? The Raspberry Pi is basically just a little credit card sized $35 computer um, and it's just a, a much easier way than purchasing some great big desktop and trying to stuff it in here. So it's pretty cheap and that's why we use it. So the software that, you, that, that was written, which is I guess on a server somewhere, communicates with these devices? Yep, that's correct. And there is software running on here as well um, that, that actually acts as like a client device to, uh, to vend the machine. Uh, than the drinks. And then this is a little HDMI to RGB, I guess, converter here to actually drive the monitor. And then here is that uh, card reader. Those cards are only used by the computer science students then? Yeah, that's correct. So these are, these are um, MyFair Desfire EV2 cards. Um, and so we basically program them with a, a magic ID that's associated with your account. Why don't we open it up and take a look inside here where the drinks are. Mary says this is a lowering shelf uh, mechanism in here, which is a, a very old Vendo design for lowering the cans and dropping them in, as opposed to just the rotors that would spin in, in the newer style. Uh, you don't see many machines like this. In fact, this is the only um, lowering shelf vending machine that I've ever seen other than, you know, in person, other than just looking at old machines on the internet. So it's uh, really amazing to even see one of these operating. I see here you're trying to build some shims and you had told me about this before. So the problem is that um, some bottles have different, uh, are, are a little thinner than other bottles. So um, our Saranac root beer, I believe we need to have a, a shim so that they will actually be staggered like this. Um, and we don't have the original shims, so we just use these pieces of plywood that we've just kind of cut up and we tape them up which is not a great solution and we're looking at trying to do something a little better. I'm not entirely clear on the history, but this is, you know, the first, uh, this is maybe like the third of a couple of big drinks. Um, in, in the past, we actually got Coca-Cola to be really generous and donate a new compressor because we had one die on us. Um, and we're really grateful for that. Um, but we're actually looking at a couple of different machines and, and that's, you know, this is really an evolving project. Um, of course, it is really neat that this is very old, but also it's kind of a, a maintenance nightmare for that reason. Do we want to open up the snack machine and see the computer control on that? Sure. So what do we have here, Mary? We have another one of these little Raspberry Pis from before, and this is the board that actually drives the motors. So we use a protocol called, called OneWire to interface with the Raspberry Pi. Um, so that it can control the motors. Um, this is a circuit that we just built in-house um, that'll switch the motors on when, when somebody requests a drink. So once again, the touch panel here does nothing. In fact, it looks like you removed it. There's no membrane or anything. So all that was pulled out of this machine. So everything is done through that touch screen or through your, your phone, which maybe we can demonstrate on the other machine, the phone app. Sure. So now we're down here at the other end of the hall. Now this is a, a slightly newer machine that they have yet integrated into the system. Mary was saying that this one actually has a control board in it. This is a Dixie Narco machine. So they have to figure out a way to integrate this into their existing system. 
they want it so that the user doesn't press the button at all, that the app, or if they put a screen on this, drops the, uh, the drinks automatically. Next to it is another old Vendo that is hacked, and Lonnie is gonna show the, the um, phone interface which allows you to dr uh, get a drink from it. As you saw before, uh, we've got the ability to drop drinks from the machine itself uh, through those screens on the machine. Um, we also have a way, if you're like say in your dorm room, and we even have some alumni that'll be in California and uh, wanna have some drink credits that they wanna get rid of. So you can actually go to a website and sign in with your CSH account. And um, once you're there, um, you actually can see all three machines that are currently online and what slots currently have drinks in them and how much those drinks cost. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm a drink admin, so I actually have the ability to edit those slots as well. Um, but normal users, when they sign in, just see the list of drinks. Um, so and who wrote all the code for this? Yeah, so the really cool thing about this project is it's been ongoing. So the current, basically the current version of this was written by actually an alumni that graduated last year. Um, but we have, we've had many versions of this like throughout history. Um, I think you, like Mary had mentioned, we had one back in the, the 90s that you'd log in from a command line interface. Um, so you talk, type into your terminal, I wanted to drop this drink um, from this machine. Um, and in the modern age, we have the, the website. And also we've got some people working on um, like actual apps for them. Like I'm working on an iPhone app. So that way you could ask Siri to drop a drink or drop a drink from your watch. Um, but currently we just have this guy up and running. And if I want a drink from Little Drink, which is this machine back here, I can just tap drop on one of these slots. So like right now I want a Coke's Choice. As you heard, now, now you can see, there's a Coke waiting for me. This machine is very much like the other one where none of these buttons do anything, but you also have the, the touch screen that they put into the machine. And I assume inside it has very similar to controls in the other, as the other Vendo. Mary's gonna actually open it up. So this actually is not the original lock. It's a house key, and I think that there's a photo somewhere of somebody uh, angle grinding out the, the slot. But the inside of this one is a lot cleaner. Um, and so, much like before, we have a uh, Raspberry Pi that runs the whole deal, um, and then a separate computer that runs the uh, touch screen. And on the inside, we have, again, that safety feature. Um, we have, you know, just a, an ordinary, I believe, also lowering shelf vending machine. Yes, it does look like a lowering shelf. Another ancient machine still operating, but completely hacked and computer controlled. What is this board here? This board is actually the control board that will talk to the Raspberry Pi and which in turn talk to, talks to the motors. Um, there's little switches on here so we can manually cycle the mechanism um, just because it's a little more convenient than actually paying for a drink just when you're loading it. And this is just sort of an activity. You guys aren't doing this to raise money for your department. No, um, we're actually a nonprofit, so we're not allowed to make any money off of this. So all the money that you put into drink goes right back into the project by buying sodas and uh, obviously parts. They consider this the library. It looks like a storage room has uh, some video games in here. I even see a Pac-Man. I didn't think to actually see if we could get this working. But... And this terminal allows you to do what, Mary? Um, it'll allow you to uh, deposit money and, and credit, credit it to your account. It has a working bill reader right down here. Um, so that's how this one works. Otherwise, students would have to give one of the four of you guys money, right? Yeah. Um, that's actually why the name exists. Um, it's called Auto Drink Admin because the joke was basically that um, this machine is for when you inevitably can't find a drink admin whenever you seem to have money or, of course, when the machine's empty. Mary's going to log in and actually credit a dollar to her account. Right, so I've just logged in. Do you log in with your ring? Yeah, I have a, an I button on my ring. Um, we're trying to move towards the, um, the tap system that you saw before, but this is one of the old systems that still only uses the I button. Um, so you should see that I just added 100 drink credits to my account. So one cent is one drink credit, very simple conversion. So you guys get excited by server rooms. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um. We got a mixture of old, old parts and then the new. Mary, is this what uh, the drink program originally started on, one of these? Um, so actually, yeah. What historically happened was we had big drink right outside of the server room, which in those times was called the computer room. And we basically just ran cereal right into the machine. And then 
we had a program that ran on the uh, on the PDP, which would actually do the job of um, selecting the motor and dropping a drink. Here we go. So the speakers here. This project is called Herald, which is I don't remember what it stands for, but it involves obnoxiously loud. Um, it's, it's quiet now. Arrival with a really obnoxious loud device. That's in the back, right? Um, so you can tap your either card or old I button, and then it'll play some song that you have selected. Does anybody have the John Cena theme? I don't think so. That's it from RIT. Four incredibly smart students here doing amazing things with drinks and I'm sure in their majors and they're off to bigger and better things when they graduate here. Um, as always, I like to say happy vending and good luck to you guys in the upcoming semester. Thank you so much. Wilson's gonna do his theme music. Let's see if this works. Yeah, I think it crashed. Okay, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah. We'll edit that out.